so much for joining for this video. So today I thought that I would do a favorites video, just everything that I've kind of used this year, what has really stood out and everything like that. So if you're interested in that, keep watching. So this is gonna be in no particular order, um, but they are just some stationary products that I have really, really enjoyed using this year, even though I have taken really long breaks between filming and everything like that. But it seems like these things I've just kind of been coming back to and they're just very essential for my collection. So the first thing are notebooks. Um, I have used a couple of different notebooks this year, but my absolute favorite one that I have used this year has been, I guess I could have taken it out of the sleeve, but it has been this endless recorder notebook. And I think I did a video on this. Oh, it would have been months ago, but it is a, a Tomoe River paper notebook. Um, very no frills. It's very basic notebook. Um, you do have like a couple of table of contents pages in the front. All of the pages are numbered. Um, so you've got 187 numbered pages, maybe 188, but I always, the fly leaf here, I always like to glue that down. Um, but I have really used this notebook quite a bit and I love the way that the paper is not super blinding white, but it is not cream. I'm not that big of a fan of cream paper. Um, but yeah, it's just really nice dot grid notebook. And like I said, it is 68 GSM to my river paper. Um, I will be changing it up for next year. I have actually already, I've been kind of getting my ideas together to set this one up. This is the Odyssey notebook from Taroko Design. And this is a, um, Cosmo Air Light notebook. So the... Oh, it was one of the last two videos that I did. It was one that I had filmed right before I took my big break, but it was like comparing the different papers with fountain pen ink. And I decided I was going to do the Cosmo Air Light paper because I've been working with it a l very, very little, but um, just the little that I have, I've really enjoyed how my pens look. I love the feel of this paper. It as well is a really nice, white paper, but I don't feel like it's too blinding white, which I really, really like. Um, this particular notebook is 183 dotted pages, but then back here, you've got your pen test swap, uh, swab pages, and you get quite a few of those. You get four of those, so I really like that. It just feels really luxurious too. Even the fly leaf has this really nice texture on it that I really like. It's a soft cover, which I really like. Um, in the front here, it's got the name plate and then you do have an index, which I'm not, I, I don't really care about that too much, but I do plan on having a couple of more collections in here. Like I said, I'm kind of working in this Rhodia notebook which is another favorite. Um, I really like having this top spiral bound notebook that I can write with my fountain pens. It is Clairefontaine paper, which I really enjoy. This is just the Rhodia dot pad. And as you can see, I've been doing uh, pen tests. So pen swabs, I've got like little diagrams in here, lists, um, and just, different little odds and ends in here. And this, uh, this notebook is used. So I have really enjoyed this notebook as well. Um, so those are kind of the three really standout notebooks that I have used. This one, I can't really say is a favorite because I haven't really put it to super good use yet, but it will be used. This is going to be my 2022 planner. Um, next thing is if you are new to the fountain pen world and you're wanting to try a lot of inks and everything like that, this uh, little cola ring book, they also make these where you can put them in a, oh my gosh, 
Rolodex. So they make like little Rolodex cards that you can put into a Rolodex. But I kind of like having the little um, cards here on a ring. So those are all of my little pen swatches. Um, the paper feels, it's a very textured paper, but um, there is something about the way that this paper is engineered. Like it gives you such uh, truly how your pen inks are going to look. It shows the shade, it shows the sheen, it shows the different variances in color. And I don't know, I just, I really, really like this little book. It is a wonderful reference. So see, you can see all the beautiful shimmer in that one. Where's some of the really shimmery ones? Um, let me find Tesla Quill so I can show y'all how sparkly. This one's a beautiful sheening ink. So it's like all metallic looking, but um, any other paper in a regular notebook, I don't think you would get the same effect with it, but it is something about the way that they engineer these um, these little cards, but, and you can keep them all in a little ring. I keep this on my desk. Sometimes when it's been a while since I've used my pens, I forget what inks I've got in there. And this is just a really easy way to reference what I've got filled in my pens. Um, speaking of pens, I don't really have any inks that I would say are my favorite. I have some that I use a lot more than others. Um, the Diamine Onyx Black is just my only black ink. So of course that gets used really well. Um, some of the Sailor inks that I've tried this year, I've really, really enjoyed. Um, I'm kind of dipping my toes into Ferris Wheel Press and I'm really liking what I've seen so far. When I had purchased samples from Ferris Wheel Press earlier in the year, um, colors like Little Robinia and um, I think Strawberry Macaron, um, they're really tra more transparent inks. I did not care for them at all, but um, trying their darker inks, their more opaque inks, I'm really, really liking Ferris Wheel Press. Um, but like I said, I don't really have any standout inks that I wanted to include on this video. Um, but as far as pens go, I've got a couple of them here. Um, so my Sailor, this is a Sailor Pro Gear Slim and from the time that I took this little baby out of the box, I was in love. And the more I have written with it, the more I enjoy this. It gives a lot more feedback than the other pens that I have tried before and ones that are in my collection. But it it's not like an irritating feedback. It's like a very satisfying feedback. And some people don't like that. Um, a lot of people equate the feedback with scratchiness, like feeling the scratchiness of the pen across the paper. But there's something about this one. It just, it writes so beautifully. This was the first um, gold nib that I had gotten and Oh, it was so well worth it. I'm really, really glad I took the plunge on this one and I totally see why people love sailors and um, looking forward to having some more in my collection for sure. So that's probably, oh, I can't say it's my most favorite, but <laughs> it's definitely on up there. Um, another really standout set of pens for me are the Banu Euphorias. Uh, when I first started looking at Banu, I was like, oh my gosh, I love the way that those pens look because they're all very crazy colored. You've got all these beautiful sparklies and variances in color and glitter and different crazy colors of resin. Like Banu pens really, really stand out in the fountain pen world. And you can kind of, I don't know, it's gotten to where you can kind of look and see. And if you see a Banu, it's like, you know, it's a Banu. Um, but my only problem with them was most of the pens that are in their other collections, they're not postable. And for some reason, I love pens that post. Um, that's just one of my preferences. I like to be able to post my pens. So 
when they came out with the Euphoria line, or when I discovered the Euphoria line, should I say, I think they did come out this year. Um, I was like, oh my gosh, look how pretty those are. But this was like my first big girl purchase. This one in particular was my first big girl pen purchase. And I'm so happy that I did it because um, I, I love the way that these nibs write. I'm wanting to say that these might be Jovo nibs. Uh, they're Schmidt. So this is a medium point Schmidt nib. And um, I've never had a problem writing with these. Now I will say taking them out of the box and filling them for the first time, I have kind of figured out that you've got to let the nibs kind of soak in water for a little while. They're not just ones that you can break out of the box and then fill it with ink and then it'll write automatically. The Sailor, yes, I was able to do that with that one. But with these, no, I was not able to. And I was honestly afraid when I first pulled it out of the box and tried to do anything I could to get some ink to flow through it. And it didn't work. I was like, oh no, I just took the plunge on this pen and it's not going to work and it's going to be bad and everything, but perfectly fine. Um, these are actually on the wider side of medium nibs. So this one is a medium fine. Medium is my happy place with pen nibs. I love the medium size. Um, but yeah, these amazing pick. They are on the larger side. I think these are the biggest pins that I own so far, um, but so well worth it. They're not super, super heavy. Now, when you do post these, um, the weight of the cap does kind of make it a little bit heavier, but God, I love the way these write. They're just so smooth. Um, next four set of pins are um, my Twisbees. And these, I would say, if you are wanting to dip your toes in, ooh, got a little shakage here. If you're wanting to dip your toes into the fountain pen world, I would say, um, maybe try Lamy. Uh, Lamy was the very first pen that I purchased and I didn't care for it. So I haven't ever gotten another one. Um, but the next pen that I bought was the Twisby Eco, and so glad that I did. Um, every Twisby Eco that I have gotten, I've really, really enjoyed. They're, they've got a beautiful weight to them, like I can sit and write with them for a while. So these are the three Twisby Ecos that I have, um, and then this one was the very first one that I picked up. This one is, this one will always have a special place in my heart because this is what made me fall in love with fountain pens, was picking this pen up. Um, and it was a semi sort of big girl purchase. Um, at When I first started looking at fountain pens, I was like, daggone, $20 for a fountain pen? That's, that's a lot. But, you know, here we are now. Um, so this is the Twisby Eco. These are very, very well loved in the fountain pen world. I would say if you're really interested in trying them out, try these and, or try the next set of pens that I'm going to talk about. I think they're really, really good starters. Um, these, I will say they do seem a little intimidating at first with their filling system um, because these are piston filled and when you get the box, you'll have the, you'll have the wrench and the silicone grease and all that stuff. But in all honesty, they're honestly no more maintenance than the other pins that I have. Um, sometimes I kind of prefer these because you, it's all in one system. You just flush it out. You don't have to, you know, take things apart and all that stuff. I mean, you can if you want to, but um, I don't know. I, I don't think that they're super high maintenance. I think they're really good beginner pins. You don't have to worry about um, your converter falling somewhere or something like that because everything's all in here. But um, yeah, really enjoy these a lot. And then the last set of pins that I will talk about are the Kaveco Skyline Sports. So 
Of all the pens that I have, I probably have more Kavecos than anything else. Um, so these five here are all Kavecos. Now this one is different. This is a Kaveco, um, this is a Skyline, but it is an aluminum version. It is the Hello Kitty one, um, kind of hard to get um, over here, but all of these are Skyline Sports. This one is the Black Crystal, and then my newest one is the, oh my gosh, is this coconut? Maybe, um, but it is the Frosted white one and then I always like to get the little pin clip that matches and then I always get the little uh, converter that you can put in here. I'm not a cartridge person. I like being able to fill with my own ink so I always get the little, um, I don't get the squeezy one. I get the little pull converter but these have always been very, very good writers for me. Um, these are probably the most comfortable for me to write with other than the Sailor. I can have long writing sessions with them and my hand doesn't get tired because they're small, they're lightweight, they're just all around a great pen. Um, if you don't have super big hands, I would say try and start with one of these because they're so easy. They come in so many fun colors and you've got other different styles. Like I said, you've got the aluminum versions. Um, they're pretty customizable, so you can put whatever clips you want on them. If you want to put a gold clip on them, you can. Um, but they're just, they're really, really good writers, and I love the colors that they come out with. I keep telling myself I want to get that teal one, um, that they just came out with not too long ago, but I haven't done it yet, but anyway, love those pens. And then to moving into the next thing. Um, the next favorite I would say are these storage boxes that I have for my pens. So I have two of them. This was my first one that I picked up and then I have this one. They're really nice, soft, kind of squishy. You've got a magnetic, uh, magnetic closure there. You can pull that down and then you've got your little pin slip here that you can slide out and then all of your pins fit in these little uh, ridges with some elastic to keep them safe. Um, and I, fit, I find that they really stack really nicely. Now the only place that you can get these, these are the D. Charles, oh my gosh, I don't know what the exact name of them is, but I'll have everything linked down below. You can get these off of pinchalet.com. Um, and I don't remember exactly what colors. I know this one is the Desert Gold, I'm wanting to say. And this one, oh, I can't remember. I'll leave it down in the description, but the leather feels so nice. It's like a nice suede feeling leather. Um, and it's a little squishy, but it is an actual box. So I feel like you could maybe not travel with it, but I don't, I wouldn't feel bad if my pens fell and they were in here. Um, now, of course I would check them very thoroughly afterwards, but I wouldn't really, worry too much if they fell like off a table or something. Um, I wouldn't really worry about my pen shattering or anything like that in these cases. And I think these are really nice. Um, I searched around for a while for a nice box that I could keep that is fairly small-ish. I mean, you compare that to like an A5 size notebook and Maybe just a little bit taller, but it's not, I don't know. It's about an A5 size, a little bit bigger, but really like these boxes a lot. And I wouldn't mind honestly having a couple more, but you know, gotta fill up the other two first. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> so those are the D Charles. Um, I believe that's called the D Charles 10 pin box, if I'm not mistaken. And like I said, you can get those from pinchalet.com. Um, next thing here, uh, I don't have anything else from Galen Leather, but it is a brand that I have looked at 
from, oh my gosh, for years now. And um, I've been intrigued by the brand and I might be taking the plunge Christmas and picking up something from them. But um, I'm talking about like a leather product, but for now, I have this washi dispenser and they sell these on galenleather.com but they go through Walden Woodworkers. So got this nice little plate here. I believe that this is the mahogany one. So it's just a beautiful wooden and metal washi tape holder. And then the little insert here. Get that back up there. So it very easily comes out. Just lift it out like this so you can switch your washies out. And then just goes back in like that. So it's really easy to switch in and out. And then they've also engineered this to where you can stack these on top of each other. And I do plan on getting another one um, because we know that uh, I have actually never shown my washi collection. I might do that. It's not as big as some people's, but it's unmanageable for me right now. <laughs> but um, I really like that it's got the nice little soft foam feet on the bottom. And like I said, they are stackable. So you could essentially have just stacks on stacks of these beautiful washi dispensers. And I got mine from uh, Vaness.com. Um, I've seen a lot of different like fine fountain pen shops selling Galen uh, leather products. So like I said, might be trying one out soon because that's one brand that I've never tried, but I have never been able to get it off my mind. My Instagram can tell you because it's like every other ad is like Galen leather, Galen leather. Okay. Um, and then speaking of leather products, um, my absolute favorite sleeve from this year is from Imperfectly Perfect. Um, I think I have, is that the one that I did the shop spotlight on? I think last year, maybe the year before, I did a shop spotlight where I did like a pretty deep-ish dive on um, Imperfectly Perfect. This is one brand that I have purchased from repeatedly. I think I have, um, I've got like three, I know I've got four of these A5 sleeves from her and then I've got a, like a pin sleeve and then a ring bound, uh, A5 ring bound planner from her. So I have a pretty good under, her work's been consistent every time. So um, she is only open on Sundays. So if you are interested in purchasing from her, you would need to join the Facebook group because that's where you get all the latest details and everything. The admins in there are amazing um, with helping you how to order and they'll let you know when the shops open, all that good stuff. But this is the inner beauty, um, the inner beauty design and from the time that I got in her shop, I have wanted something in so many of these like print. So I have this A5 sleeve and then my ring bound planner is in this exact same, uh, exact same print and colorway. This is the antique with blackened edges. I've got black on the sides there. Um, did I pick? I think I picked like gray stitching. I think it looks really nice. Not super obtrusive and then the gold splatter. But anyway, this is the A5 sleeve. Her work's been spot on and consistent every time. Been very, very happy with her work every single time. So that is what the sleeve looks like. And um, yeah. So she is definitely a shop that I can very highly recommend. Love her stuff. And then um, 
One, last two things. Um, so a couple of months ago, I would say, I went to the container store for the first time and fell in love. Oh, it's an organizer's dream. But I picked up one of these clear, it's actually a fridge organization tool. I think that's kind of how they market it for, but it is from uh, the people from the Home Edit. If you have seen their show on Netflix, love that show. Um, but they've got their own collection at the Container Store as well as Marie Kondo. But um, this is just like a, I can't remember exactly what it's called, but I'll, like I said, I'll leave a link down below. But I wanted something that would be like big enough to hold my stickers and other little odds and ends. So as you can see, I've got everything stuffed in here. So I've got like my vintage papers back here that I use in my journals, um, these little photo boxes. Each one of these is a different brand. Um, and then I've got like stickers and stuff here in the front. Now, like I said, this is meant for the fridge, but you could probably use it for other stuff too. But it is just a really nice clear drawer. This pulls out completely. But I just thought it'd be a really nice way for me to be able to see what I've got. And it's big enough to where um, I used to keep my stickers and stuff in baskets and keep them like, like that. But I wanted something that would kind of cover everything so they just wouldn't just collect a bunch of dust and um, that drawer has been very well loved <laughs> um, and I would say it's a very very good investment I would probably I, and I I think they're stackable I could be wrong about that but they might be stackable don't know but anyway if I did get another one um, it's got a little lip there at the top to where you could like probably put like eeks and stuff in it. So I don't know, but I really, really like it a lot. And then the last thing, this one isn't necessarily a stationary product, but it coincides with everything. And I wanted to talk about my most used deck this year. Um, and it is actually the Antique Anatomy Tarot. Um, I wouldn't say that I did. I didn't do a scathing interview or a interview. I didn't do a scathing review on it, but I did have a lot of concerns when I first got these in my hand because of how thin the cards are. They are a lot thinner than any of my other decks. But I can say, how long ago did I do that review? I want to say that these released to the U.S. last year, maybe. I can't remember. Anyway, but now I keep mine in the box. Anytime I use them, when I do my card pulls, they go back in the box. Um, and then the book goes on top of it. They stay packaged up exactly as they came in the package. So if you like to keep yours in a bag or you travel with them and things like that, then I can't say that, um, that they'll hold up as well as mine have. Um, I'm also not a super, super rough shuffler. I, I mean, I, I do tend to baby my cards, um, but I, I forget to put a cloth down. So sometimes they are just shuffled on the wood on my desk and things like that. So, I mean, I would say that I probably use them about average. Um, I don't super, super baby them, but I'm also not super rough with them. But they have held up so, so well. I think I may have one card in here that might have just a little bit of, um, just a teensy bit of damage on the side. You can kind of see on that one and then there. Um, and then maybe where that line is, where the car is just kind of coming apart a little bit. But other than that, these have really held up well. And even the shuffling that I do, because I do bridge shuffles and then I do overhand shuffles, like you can see that even shuffling the way that I do, it hasn't warped the cards. So 
even though these cards are really, really thin, they have held up so well. And um, yeah, I'm really impressed with it. Now I do want to try to vary up my decks in the next year. So I'll probably be trying to use another one, but this one has been my most used for the year. I love the imagery. I love the card backs, how they look so worn and vintage. I, I just, I love the imagery that she used in here. So you've got all the florals and then the, you know, the, the anatomy pieces and the apothecary stuff. So it's like, I love this deck so much. I love it. Um, do I love it more than the true black tarot? I think they're pretty much on par with each other, but like in my tier list, like true black tarot is S tier. And I would say this is right beside it. But, um, and I would even say the book is so, so descriptive. The book goes a lot more into the descriptions of the cards than I would say some other guidebooks that I have. Um, there have even been times where I didn't have to pull out my tarot Bible, which is this. I still use this all the time. Um, but anyway, so that is all of my favorites for this year. Hell, how could I have forgotten about this too? Other favorite, my caboodle. If you are looking for something to hold stickers, things like that, if you like to carry your stuff around the house, now I wouldn't say, I mean, you could travel with this. People do that, right? But um, for me, myself, I have other things that I could travel with that would, I think, be a little bit better. But Seriously, get a caboodle. These are amazing. You can put all of your washies here. You've got a mirror that is completely useless for these purposes, but whatever. I've got my pens stored there. Um, and then all of this space for stuff here. So I've got washies. I've got pouches with stickers in them. I've got sticker books and envelopes and all of the things in here. So if you are looking for something that you can take maybe from room to room, if you want to plan in your bed or anything like that, you don't want to be sitting at your desk. I have used this, love it. I think it's a really cool, easy, fun way to um, store your stuff. Plus, I mean, come on, it's a caboodle. Like I was born in the 80s was a 90s kid. I love caboodles. The nostalgia. I think I picked this one up from Amazon. I don't know if you can still get this particular color, but you can find all kinds of different colors of caboodles. Even if you want to do like the original colors, you know, with the color blocking on them, you can find those, but that's what I have done. And then of course I've got my stickers from different places. I like to stick my little stickers on here and I hope to have everything stickered like the 90s kid that I am. What are some of your favorite items that you have used this year? Let me know. Um, so yeah, I think that's about it. Thank you so much for joining me for this video. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you would like to see future videos, please hit subscribe. I would love to have you over here. And other than that, I will talk to you soon. Bye, everybody.